hopefully. Fish pal. Sure, fish pal. Let's be friend. Did we get phased? What? Yeah, all right. With the uh, CRZ and phasing off the table for Classic WoW, how will you address server population concerns in Classic, both with caps and possibly with low pop realms? OK, so uh, for some folks who've been jumping into the Classic demo, you may have noticed that if you jump in with your friend, you're not necessarily always seeing them, e each other in the same version of the Barons right now. That is sharding. There has been a lot of concern and discussion expressed around it on the internet. We understand. So, First off, the demo is kind of a special case, right? Because it's not an organic world where everyone is spread out. It's literally every single character using a template being created in the exact same point in the world in Barrens or Westfall. We leverage that tech to make the demo experience run more smoothly. Now, that said, we recognize that launching WoW Classic poses a couple of unique challenges. Unlike, unlike launching a traditional game that's brand new, where you can assume that everyone who is jumping in there on launch day has the intent to at least explore playing it long term. We expect that early on with Classic, there are going to be some people who are there, die hard, dedicated, they're racing to defeat Ragnaros and Onyxia. There are going to be others who just want to check it out casually. They just want to see what all the fuss is about. They want to see what they missed. And our concern is, I think exactly as you suggest, what, what's that going to look like? What's that going to do to realm communities as subserver populations may dwindle over time? That is where we are looking at using sharding in a very limited way. We understand, and I understand completely, that sharding is antithetical to the concept of a cohesive classic community where you're competing over limited resources. When Lord Kazakh is up and guilds are racing to defeat him, there needs to only be one Lord Kazakh. If you're trying to get, you know, if you're trying to lock down the thorium veins that spawn in limited sections of the world, you should be competing over limited resources. That said, the first few weeks, when everybody is packed into Valley of Trials, when everybody is packed into Elwyn, we think we can use sharding there in a limited, time-limited way to solve the initial launch day load problems while making sure that in the long run, as server communities solidify, there's a healthy population and a single world for everyone to live in. Thank you. With the WoW Classic demo upon us, phasing, sharding has become a big discussion, as it's pretty clear, and Blizzard have confirmed they are probably going to use some sharding technology in Classic, and this has caused a number of people to be outraged, while other people have said it has to happen. This has to happen. Now, when I initially was approaching the subject, I've got to be honest, I will side with the Classic guys here. My number one hatred in World of Warcraft right now is the sharding technology. I cannot stand it, because... I did play a long time ago, and I remember going into Ironforge and lagging like fuck, but also seeing so many people that were of guilds of my realm, that were the big players of my realm, seeing the trade skillers. Recently on the Classic Cast podcast, I talked about the people who got in contact with me who are looking forward to being trade skillers in Classic. They want to do that. They want to be the server's enchanter. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. Back in Classic, let's say you wanted to get something enchanted, you would have to find somebody who had the recipe, you would have to give them your materials, and then they could enchant something for you. This meant trust. This meant that potentially you were handing over some very expensive items and then walking away with it. This meant that trade skillers of all varieties actually had to build up a reputation within the community for being somebody to trust. Now, with sharding technology, even if that person is online, is on your realm, is part of your faction, there is actually very little guarantee that you will be able to even see them. And this crumbles the whole prospect of the system. Not only that, but of course, going into an area that is your central city, your central hub, and seeing hundreds of players around you instantly tells you there are a lot of people playing this game. It's fun, it's warm, it's friendly. Sometimes there's arguments going on. That's all part of what a community in a game is like. This is the essence of the MMO. It's massively multiplayer. And you want to be able to go into that environment and see and feel that this is a living, breathing world. And not only that, having access to everybody on the realm at once allows for plenty of crazy things to happen. Kazakh invading a realm, not just a shard, 
right? People invading a Stormwind, people invading Ironforge on your realm is a big deal, and you know that the guilds of that realm would respond in kind, and you knew the names of the people that were coming. There are lots and lots and lots of great social benefits to having no sharding. It's really the foundation of the server. And now when I look around, I can't even see people of my own guild. They're in the same area, but I can't see them. It happens to me pretty regularly. And if I travel through the world, of course, I've become used to this system. And I've become expectant of this system. If I go to do a world quest, I pretty much expect the mob to be waiting for me. Or that I'll have to access to it within a few seconds. 30 seconds, whatever it might be, I'm going to get it back. And if there happens to be allies there because I play with war mode, then sure, I might have to get a group. But for the most part, I literally expect things to be served to me on a silver platter. And I don't really expect much in the way of competition for certain things like herbs, mining nodes, especially now multiple people can click them within a certain time frame. Everything I want access to and that I find on my solo journey is mine. This is my single player experience with other people around it, but there's a huge amount of convenience that's been added to basically give me that single player experience. So when I saw phasing and sharding occurring to me during the Classic WoW demo, I was instantly turned off. And I said it way before the demo came out that phasing and sharding could be the death nail for the game because all those aspects could crumble and fall. But there's more to this. There's more to this though. And I think people are correct in this judgment. If phasing and sharding is to exist in the early levels, let's say, and we're going to come back to this because there's some interesting research that I found while looking into this subject, is it will give you a playable experience. Now, that playable, smooth experience is a big deal to Blizzard, which is not surprising as the developer of the game. They want their players to have the best experience they can provide. And lag and crashing when entering cities, which was a big problem for a lot of people, all these things are not a good playable experience. Server queues, when you come home from work and you want to play some WoW and looking at thousands of people in the queue, is not a great experience. Developers do not like it when their players are struggling to play their game. Why would they? They want to make a game you can play. That's not strange. That's not them being evil. That's not them being horrible. But Blizzard gets to decide what's okay and what's not. And quite frankly, one of the biggest issues with phasing technology and why people are saying, I would rather have the lag, I would rather have the disconnects, I would rather have the horrors that come with no phasing and sharding, because I don't trust you anymore. And that's a big issue. I don't trust when you will decide that enough's enough and you're going to toggle the switch and switch it on. Blizzard says they're going to use it in the early zones. We've seen that come from BlizzCon and maybe if something happens. Now, what could happen? Well, that's up to Blizzard to decide. At any point, they could say, okay, this is too busy. We're going to turn it to this. We're going to switch on the sharding technology because frankly, there's too many of you in this area and it's causing people play disruption. And we don't know what that line is. When do we cross that line? And as people are clearly pointing out, is there's a lack of trust there. We don't trust you to say 100 people is too many. 60 people is too many. 200 people is too many. We just don't know when you're going to flick the switch and say, enough's enough, we're going to change it. And then that whole system, that social system that we brought about is disrupted. So those are the obvious problems that come with phasing and sharding because it does sever the community. It puts a knife down the middle and it splits them into pieces and that's a big issue. Now, that obviously sounds like I would be fully on board with no phasing and sharding. And a big part of that is I lived through it. I was there. I lived through it. I have had my character stuck on a griffin flying from Stormwind for over 30 minutes. I've had massive server queues. I've had instances unable to spawn because there's too many of them going. I've had these problems where I go into a city and suddenly my, t my PC turns into a chugging choo-choo. I've lived through it and I'm still here today and I'm still playing that game. So that's the mindset I was going in with. It's like, yes, honestly, I understand the benefits. I 100% understand the benefits that I have ridiculous FPS. I have a wonderful smooth gaming experience. I have access to all the things that I want to do in my time frame using the sharding technology. I do, but I would prefer it without it. 
because the problems it creates are problems that only exist now because of sharding and phasing. Those are the issues I have right now. When it originally came in, I actually took the benefit of it. I thought it was really cool and really good. Like most of the changes Blizzard makes, because we know when these things are implemented, we only see the short-term benefits. The long-term issues they create, they take long-term. We don't see them until later. So I did a little digging because, as I said earlier, I was a little rose-tinted in my thinking. I was a little rose-tinted because, again, I lived through these problems and I'm still here to this day. But if we look at Nostalrius, let's go back to Nostalrius. Now, it's a little iffy, this, and a lot of people are sensitive about Nostalrius, but I truly do not mean to offend anybody in this discussion. I'm just looking at what I can find because it's very difficult to find accurate information during original Classic because it was so long ago. But we can look at Nostarius before it gained the popular uh, the attention that it got in 2016 and it spiked in popularity pretty heavily. Let's look before that uh, when it was just its day-to-day -day running of what was going on. So Nostarius was an extremely popular and very well populated classic server. Now before it gained all that notoriety, what I found spread across a number of a number of posts, and it's very easy to find these. I'll link some down below. Uh, during 2015, uh, what we found is at weekends it was peaking around 8k, uh, and you know, f five to 6k, sometimes 3k during the day. That's the information I can find, and that is repeated several times, including by people from the server uh, admin team itself during that period of time. Now, that's not a great deal of people. That's not a huge amount of people, as you can imagine. It's compared to live. For a private server, it's an enormous amount of people. Again, I'm not here to shit on Nostarius. I have no reason to. I'm just trying to find some information to back up the situation we're in now. So, we're going through these posts. What did, we, what did I find? Well, in fact, I found a number of people who refused to play the server because it was too busy. It was too overpopulated. Even at those numbers, even when it was down to like 3k, 5k, there were far too many people on the server to play. And a big part of this, and I, I have to include this, is the starting areas. Because most people quit during that period of time. Or not most people, that's the wrong word. People quit during that period because they couldn't get anything done. They simply couldn't get anything done. There was too many people. The server spawns were too low, which could be adjusted. We've seen dynamic spawns in the classic WoW demo. All these things were occurring, which stopped people being able to make it past Westfall, being able to make it past the Barrens, because there's just far too many people unable to play in the vanilla style because the game wasn't expected to house that many people and therefore had to stop. And they switched off to other private servers where way less people were playing because, frankly, they found the server unplayable nothing to do with queues more to do with the fact that the game just could not support that many people and once i was reading these and reading the issues the guys were having i was like you know what there's a fair argument for sharding there is there's a fair argument for sharding because when it wasn't in the popular when it wasn't in the spotlight and people weren't championing the cause there were plenty of complaints about overpopulation on the server there are, these aren't hard to find again i'm not making this show up and I, I understand people are very i'm being careful here because people get very very aggressive about nostarius although this is nothing i'm not shitting on nostarius in any way all i'm saying is that we there is clear evidence before uh, it became a sort of movement which i think is a fair thing to say um is people were pretty unhappy with this starting area and only when they managed to get through that and the people who did survive that and got through that process and people started to th thin out did the game become better but that surge that surge of people when, who were hitting that starting zone because classic wasn't really great at handling starting experiences let's be honest here can we be honest for a second <laughs> they're not great at handling that and too many people with too few mobs causes people to get bored they get frustrated they log out people will wait i've seen a few posts here with people waiting for like two three weeks before they could start playing that's not going to fly when Blizzard launches Classic. And that's just straight up the way it's going to be. But is sharding the only solution for this? No, absolutely not. Sharding is not the only solution to this. And we can say that because we're here today. And we survived for a long time without sharding technology. We had some problems, but we lived through it. How did they do it in the past? And what led us to this scenario? Well, I actually went back to a Mr. Pandaria video I made. Which is when Blizzard was looking at sharding and stuff like that. Is... Blizzard wanted to forcibly merge servers because what happened is 
as servers became more popular, certainly around the times when there were arena realms and the servers which housed the massively popular PvE guilds, people gravitated towards it. If you wanted to play in a really good PvE guild or you wanted to find good arena partners, people started gravitating towards those realms, re-rolling towards those realms. And it doesn't take much more than a cursory look at WoW Progress to see that the population divide now is hugely skewed to just about 10 realms. Out of all the realms in the game, they're hugely, hugely skewed towards just about 10 of them. And usually they're divided by faction. There's like 8 to 10 huge horde realms, really big, that are pushing like 20,000 players on the horde side alone. And then there's a good six, 6 or so alliance realms which are over 10k. And the rest of the realms so quickly drop off in activity. It's pretty sad, honestly, to see how many realms there are with barely anybody playing them. Way less than you would see on these pri on a Starry's private server. Way, way less. So when Blizzard proposed that they forcibly merge the realms because they can say something like, look, there's 14,000 Alliance players here and 2,000 Horde realms. And 2,000 Horde players. We could merge like six or seven Horde realms, Horde heavy realms, which have very few Alliance players. Look at a few Horde realms that have like 4,000 players. We can merge a few of these together because they have a really low Alliance population and give you a full active realm. Because a problem at the time was auction house communities, the economy was ruined, some sides have literally no players to play with. If you look, there are some Alliance realms with less less than 300 players there's one with 166 one with 247 one with 253 264 269 274 310 and that's accounts so those include alts and things so this is crazy people said no because people were very very attached to their realm crazily attached to their realm and the players said no i came from lightbringer that is my realm that is my home. I have vanilla memories there where I was a big deal there. This is where I have a lot of memories. This is where I grew up, right? Essentially, in terms of the game, this is where I grew up. This is my hometown, and I will not be moved from there. My wish is that, yes, Classic is going to be heavily hammered at launch. There is no doubt about it, but it's going to thin out, as it always does. As with any expansion, as with anything else, it's going to thin out quite naturally that is going to happen so how do we fix this i would like to see one multiple realms of the same name which are telling people ultimately they're going to be mixed together if they want to have ragnaros 1 ragnaros 2 and ragnaros 3 and then put them together fine let's do that later down the line but tell players beforehand that's what's going to happen so if you want to play with your friends on ragnaros sure but go on ragnaros 2 they're going to be merging at some point that's what's going to happen. Try and play with your friends now because it might take a while. It might take a little bit longer to thin out than necessary. But let's do something. But don't let players have a voice in this. And I know that sounds terrible, but I really think it's the only way they can go about it rather than saying, hey, guys, do you want us to merge the realms? And they're going, no, this is where I started. This is where I want to stay. Instead, pre-war people, it's going to happen. Let people be comfortable with it. Let's go with it. Okay, let's do that. And also, they could be very careful about capping off servers. This is what they used to do, is they used to disallow people from creating characters on certain realms. Once that realm had hit the point that they were happy with, let's say no. No more characters on that realm. And sure, that makes people go, but I wanted to play on that realm. I wanted to do this and that. There are, again, ways around that by saying, go to the alternative realm. When, thing plays, when this thins out, then we'll mix it together. All that kind of good stuff. But there are ways around it because we did it in the past. And that's the important takeaway here. There is a number of suggestions, a number of ways. It may be even better than the things I suggested, but that's not the point. The point is it does work, and we've done it in the past. The issue is, is when you start trying to pander to people that's not in their own best interests of what they want. And sure, some people are going to want quiet dead realms. There are people like that who want dead quiet realms. If that's the way they want to go, you could have a quiet realm. There's no, no reason not to have that. You can have an individual realm which is low population and people might go there, but that's entirely on you. I would love to see your thoughts on this because there is evidence, there is evidence that if they don't do something, it's going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a bad thing at the very start and if it gets off on the wrong foot, that could be bad forever. A first impression is everything. It really is. 
It's absolutely everything. I'd love to see your thoughts on it. Bye-bye.